Today I wanted to talk about how Einstein's infinitely divisible space-time ether is nonsense. And some of you say, oh, Einstein didn't do his relativity work based on ether. But Einstein's space-time imagined that there's real dimensions and real clocks or clock rates. And those dimensions and clock rates had to come from somewhere and they also had to be able to be changed. Einstein never bothered to say where his dimensions and clocks came from or how they changed. It was a Gedanken experiment. It was purely imaginary then and it's purely imaginary today. Now there's been a debate on how physicists look at general relativity and gravity. They have regular general relativity according to Einstein and they have quantum general relativity. And physicists try to work on a version of quantum general relativity that correlates with Einstein's version of relativity in order to unify quantum electrodynamics with gravity. But they don't seem to recognize that at the beginning of this debate is you have to come up with an idea of where the dimensions and clocks came from. And one of the problems I've been giving some thought to is that Einstein's space medium is infinitely divisible as well as being, or as part of being, continuous and smooth. And by infinitely divisible, I mean between any two points, you can draw any number of lines, an infinite number of lines. And on these infinite number of lines, there's an infinite number of points on each line. And that's because points are dimensionless. And so between any two points, you can fit more points, no matter how close together they are. And that's why we have this continuous smooth theory, non-quantized theory. But the problem with that is that points are dimensionless by definition. And if you have dimensionless points and you put them together, you still don't have any dimensions. So an ether made of dimensionless points has no dimensions at all. It also doesn't have any clocks, so it doesn't have any time property. And it's not even real. It doesn't exist. Anything that has no dimensions is not a real material. In order to have something that's physically real, it has to have dimensions. So Einstein's idea is purely imaginary. His substrate for his relativity, both special and general relativity. So what it comes down to is any real substance we may look for to find out where these dimension and clocks come from are quantized. You can think about particles, you can think about atoms, you can think about molecules, you can think about quantum fluctuations. Quantum fluctuations have wavelengths and frequencies which give them properties of physical dimensions and time rate. The quantum field also has the advantages of its being self-regulating. The quantum fluctuations move in and out, and they're dipoles. And so they call, uh, cause other dipoles to rotate, which cause other dipoles to rotate. But they're resisting rotation because they're moving against each other. So for a given amount of energy in a quantum fluctuation, their wavelength is restricted by the torque of the quantum field. It's called the van der Waals torque. So this torque limits the wavelength. It also limits the frequency and it determines the speed of light, which is what wavelength times frequency is equal to. And it also determines the permittivity and permeability, which give you the speed of light. So, as I said, the advantage of the quantum field is that it gives dimensions and time to space because it's everywhere in space and it gives us our basic needs for developing a real theory, a physically real theory of general relativity and special relativity. 
So again, Einstein's idea of an infinitely divisible space-time media is purely imaginary. Any physically real medium leads to quantum relativity based on a quantized medium. And the simplest physical medium is the quantum field. And any other substance we might consider that has distances and clock rates is going to be a quantized medium. So the key is, if we really want to have real physics and not imaginary physics made by mathematicians who aren't physicists, then we have to start with a quantized field and build up to a theory of special and general relativity and later gravity that's consistent with a quantized medium that has real dimensions and real clock rates. So this is something I've been giving some thought to, that there shouldn't even be a question of whether there's Einstein's general relativity versus quantum general relativity. It's always been, it has to be quantum general relativity, but we have to start with the basics. We have to understand where the distances and time emerge from. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I have one paper that's sort of related, but I don't talk about the infinitely divisible issue, and I also have some books for sale on my quantum field theory and my particle theory if you want to read about my research. So thanks for watching.